But today we tell you why the new Alto K10 is the best budget buy, walk you through the first all-electric AMG in India and check out Harley Davidson's latest Sportster motorcycle. Hello and welcome to Overdrive, I am Soini Dutt. The third generation Alto K10 is here after a decade and it now sits on a safer high-tech platform, has a lot more space than the Alto K10 that it replaces and now it also is the best budget buy in the country and why do I say so? It's time to find out. When you think of Maruti Suzuki, what do you think of? Chances are it's going to be the Maruti 800 but there's another car that's as synonymous and as successful for the brand and that's the Alto. The new gen Alto finally moves to a new gen platform. It's the hard tech platform that underpins other Maruti Suzuki's with the exception of the new Brezza and upcoming Grand Vitara which are on the more robust Global C platform. Essentially though, hardtech cars are made with higher tensile strength steel at their core for better impact absorption, better handling and more stability. With the change in platform, the new gen Alto has grown in dimensions too. While it's substantially larger than the Alto 800, the exterior dimensions aren't far removed from the previous gen Alto K10 which went off sale in 2020 in the transition to BS6. The wheelbase has gone up on both however, which we'll get to since it's such an important part of the new Alto. Hmm, the new Alto K10 looks familiar, doesn't it? With a lot of the new Celerio in its grille and upturned headlights and smallish taillights. We also see a bit of Hyundai i10 and Santo in it, but the end result is that it's cheery, inoffensive and mostly inconspicuous. The steel wheels are 13s and made downsized 145 section tyres. Most people might not be bothered too much about that since the trade-off in handling will likely positively affect efficiency in the real world. What people will like a lot however is the improved cabin. You sit higher up on seats with better support with a better view out the airy windows thanks to a lower window line. The fit and finish is on par with others in the segment like the Espresso and Renault Quid. The touchscreen infotainment, 4 speaker audio, steering mounted controls, rear parking sensors, they all bring the Alto K10 up to date but with no rear view camera, power over VMs or rear wiper that's about as much features as you get. Even the instrumentation nixes the taco but does have trip meters, average consumption and distance to empty readouts. Jumping out of the front seats of the Alto into the rear kind of show you just how much bigger the car has become. I still find it hard to believe that this is an Alto just because of how much space I've got back here. The seat is set to my height, about 5'10 and a half and there's a lot of room back here. It's quite surprising for an Alto. Now there is some typical Alto traits, the headdress are fixed and they end at a slightly strange angle but there is enough headroom and there is space for three in a pinch. Of course there's more boot space than before as well. Which means a lot more bags. The Alto K10 runs an updated BS6 compliant 1 litre 3 cylinder petrol engine with 67 PS and 89 Nm of torque mated to a 5 speed gearbox. Our impressions of the manual are first. So, what does this Alto K10 feel like to drive? In a lot of ways, it feels familiar, but it also feels more mature, more grown up. Slightly heavier response from the steering. The ride quality feels a lot more composed. It does feel like a typical Maruti in that you feel the bumps, but then again, you don't feel the bumps, if you know what I'm saying. Compared to what I remember the previous Alto feeling like, you do sit a lot higher up in this, but that does mean that you've got great visibility. Now, the seat isn't adjustable for height considering the segment it sits in. The steering isn't adjustable either, but everything just falls to hand. It feels familiar, it feels like the Alto that you've grown up driving. Of course, the Alto feels most at home when you're navigating these tiny bi-lanes because given its diminutive size and the fact that this K10 engine has enough low-down torque, you can get away with potting around in second gear. And again, tight corners like this, twirl on the wheel and you're good to go. 
Now, obviously, with an Alto that's grown in wheelbase and space, you want to know how good it is when it comes to maneuvering. So, narrow road, no reverse camera, just the mirrors to rely on. The slightly heavy, very natural feeling steering does come into play. Wait, there is several turns lock to lock. Will it make it? <laughs> oh, yeah, it did. With a lot of room to spare. The Alto k always been considered a little bit of a pocket rocket and when you put your foot down, you feel that enthusiasm. Now, of course, you don't know what revs the engine is doing, but it does feel nice to really slot it into another gear and that shift quality just feels right. At triple digit highway speeds, you do have to watch out over bumps because the Alto can get a little upset if you're not careful. Quick spin in the AMT equipped car told us that the auto gear shift box has come a long way. It's perfectly capable of city driving without too many jerks save for the odd hiccup in fueling midway through the rev range. Getting away from standstill still felt smooth enough with none of the off the line jerks though aggressive acceleration does introduce some head nod between shifts. While we weren't able to fully test the Alto K10 to usual overdrive standards, a quick V-Box test in the manual variant showed a 0-100 kmph in under 15 seconds, all the while feeling quicker than that time thanks to the responsiveness of the engine. In our brief city efficiency testing of the AGS variant, we achieved over 21 kmph. Note, the AGS variant has a better claimed ARAI tested efficiency than the manual itself. With a difference of Rs 60,000 to the smaller previous gen Alto 800, the Alto K10 makes sense as an upgrade considering how much more of everything you get. On the other hand, the Renault Quid 800cc starts about Rs 65,000 more than the new K10 but doesn't drive as nice though it one-ups the Alto in other ways. There's a smaller price to pay to upgrade to an Espresso which offers much the same experience in a slightly taller package. But for the budget conscious, what you're left with is a new Alto K10 that's bigger and better than before, making it an easy pick at this end of the segment. For almost two decades, the Maruti Suzuki Alto K10 was the largest selling hatchback in India. But it hasn't been the same since the past two years. In fact, we do hope that this model can bring in the numbers for the brand once again in the micro hatchback segment. We'll take a very quick break here on the show. But coming up on the other side, we acquaint you with the first ever electric AMG from Mercedes-Benz to have launched in the country. Stay with us, you're watching Overdrive. <laughs> 